quite like them because they allow me to continually drip feed funds in and I know that they're just going to be following what the markets are doing. It means that I don't necessarily have to keep an eye on it every single day. Well, I'm not really very keen on them because, I mean, it's the sort of the herd mentality is what I feel, you know, so they're always going to be sort of tracking. So as it's going down, it's going to be going down and sort of tracking the whole time. So, no, I've never been very keen on them. From what I know, they are very low cost and uh, low commission rates and easy to use, especially online. Hello and welcome to Stock Talk, self trades regular programme discussing investments, markets and financial planning. This edition takes a closer look at exchange traded funds, ETFs, and asks what are they, what makes them special and how can they be used in a balanced portfolio. ETFs are passively managed instruments which track a range of market indices and sectors from Britain to Europe, North America, Brazil, Russia, India and China. They combine the characteristics of a quoted instrument, like a share, with a more traditional fund, a hybrid, if you like, between an OIC and an investment trust. Launched in the UK back in 2000, there has been an explosion in issues and issuers since 2006, when regulatory and taxation changes made London a more attractive home for the product. There's plenty you'll need to know if you're thinking about investing in and getting the most out of ETFs. And this program is designed to help you do just that. Over the next few minutes, we'll be talking to Dan Draper of Lixor and giving you our ETF insight. But first, here's our quick introduction to exchange traded funds. ETFs are index tracking funds offering access to markets across the world. But what makes them so innovative and how can you invest? So what is an ETF? Well, Unit trusts and OICs, with which most people are familiar, are what's called open-ended. This means that new units are created when investors buy and they're cancelled when they sell. The instrument trades at net asset value of the fund, that's the sum of its parts, divided by the number of units, and they're usually priced just once a day. Equities, such as investment trusts or shares, are different. Closed-ended, they are quoted on the stock exchange throughout the day and have a fixed number of shares in issue. The price is therefore determined by supply and demand. Now, imagine a mix of these, an open-ended fund trading at net asset value, which is quoted on the stock exchange. Well, then you have an exchange-traded fund. Throw into the mix low charges, transparency and excellent liquidity, meaning you can sell whenever the market's open, and it's little wonder that ETFs have established themselves as a staple portfolio component. Most ETFs are index trackers, and the range of underlyings is what makes them especially attractive. The FTSE 100 tracker might be the most popular, but it's only the beginning of an ever-growing selection. The choice of ETFs includes indices such as the UK, Europe, Asia, USA, Russia and South America. It means property, water, infrastructure, private equity, bonds, commodities such as metals, agriculture, livestock, energy and these new fundamental ETFs. So, how do you invest in an ETF? Well, it's simple. Since they are quoted on the London Stock Exchange, they're as easy to buy as shares, and cheaper too, since like funds, they don't attract stamp duty. Prices are available throughout the day, changing with the net asset value of the fund. ETFs are highly flexible instruments which can be held in a range of accounts, including dealing, ISA, SIF, and even self-select child trust funds. So, ETFs are cost-effective, transparent, and liquid index trackers. For the real detail on the product, we spoke to Dan Draper of Lixor. I started by asking him, why ETFs have such a comparatively low profile when compared to traditional funds? ETFs are new. That's, that's really the main reason. Uh, new innovation, the concept, idea, the theory, if you will, it really started back in the 1950s when people started thinking about uh, investments in terms of portfolios and, and diversification. But that really led through the technology uh, innovations, lower trading costs in particular through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and, uh, and really ETFs uh, started really uh, getting uh, profile in the press and among the public in the last five to six years. Are they complex? How would you describe these products in, in a very straightforward way? Now, I think the, sim the, the simplicity of an ETF uh, really does derive from what you're trying to accomplish, kind of the end goal. And that idea, again, comes from the basic idea that if you asset allocate your, your, um, you, or if you allocate your assets the correct way um, and the most efficient way, that gives you the highest chance of succeeding your wealth goals. And so from that perspective, working backwards, then you think, well, what's the cheapest way for me to do this? Mm -hmm. And that's why ETFs are, are simple. It gives you a top-down ability to pick the right asset classes in the right amounts for your particular wealth goals. Are they for trading or for long-term savings? Really both, because if you look at what an ETF is, it's really a marriage of 
an open-ended investment company, an OIC, uh, with a basket of shares. And as I, I mentioned earlier, it's that ability to um, the, the, uh, the trading cost, the technologies of trading large basket of shares, i.e. in a particular index, the FTSE 100, the S&P 500, what have you. It's that ability to trade them instantaneously all at once, but then putting them into an open-ended fund that makes them, uh, that makes them you know, the, the simplistic instruments they are, and, but also giving an investor the ability to buy as little as just one share. So it's taking things that uh, institutions 20 years ago would have to do in large sizes, millions of pounds. Now we have it in a format where you could buy all 100 shares instantaneously of the FTSE 100 mm. for about six and a half pounds. And can you explain these uh, so-called fundamental ETFs? Yeah, it, it comes down to a, a basic argument that started really in, in academia about um, a, an idea that uh, if you look at a, a, a share price, uh, for example, does that share price represent all, uh, can, you, can you look and see if there are biases from past information, current information, or even future information? And uh, you have a group of academics who really believe that the share price uh, reflects all information, that it is the most efficient measure of, of really all information that we have. But there's a real difference. A lot of people said, well, look, we live in the real world. And we think that price is particularly shorter term because people have fear, they have greed, different behavioral emotions. Sometimes that price deviates from what the real value of that company is, um, particularly in the short to medium term. So it's more of a philosophical shift. But what we've done is we've taken that theory into practice. And we said, if you do believe that particularly because investors' behavior varies short to medium term, how can we then go to get, look at the intrinsic value of, of shares or indices overall and build a product around that. So what we've done is we've partnered with the leader uh, in this space, uh, research affiliates uh, in, in the FTSE group um, you know, here in, in London, and we've created a series of indexes on the US, Europe, and Japan. And again, the idea is that rather than looking at the current price reflecting the, absolute, the, the perfect value, if you will, we believe that by weighting cash flows, the dividends, the revenues, and the price to book value, of, of, the, of the constituents of the indices, that's going to lead you to a long-term uh, better performance and, and really reaching the true intrinsic value uh, of the company. So it's a bit long-winded, but it's an interesting concept. And if you will, the, the testing of past performance in the U.S. has led to superior uh, returns on a risk-adjusted basis. And in particular in the U.S. market, we've seen uh, risk-adjusted returns from 1960 to about 2% higher than the actual S&P 500 at slightly lower volatility. So it's new. Let's see how these trade through various market cycles. But I think it's an exciting development. And I think that um, you know, using traditional indices, which are, 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 are tried and, and, and tested, um, you know, it probably makes the most sense. But I think looking at some of these fundamental indices, they're certainly going to find a place you know, for the right, right investors. So let's look ahead. What trends do you see overseas in ETFs that might come here to the UK? Well, as, as you can see, we've pretty much covered all the traditional asset classes. Uh, we're now covering almost all of the alternative asset classes, but I think um, what investors are, are asking for are some of the tools that you may have associated with, say, even hedge funds in the past. Look, I'd like the ability to short more efficiently. I'd like the ability to perhaps use leverage more efficiently in my portfolio. And, and again, for most investors, you know, we, um, as, a, as a provider, we recommend talk to your advisor, your financial planner. But for more sophisticated clients, particularly in the UK, they're looking for those opportunities. So, for instance, in the US, there are a few ETFs uh, that are used for shorting called inverse ETFs, and they'll literally give the inverse performance of a traditional index. Well, we certainly see, hopefully sometime this year, a number of those ETFs coming to the UK and Europe. I think that's a great trend. As well, we're seeing some clients uh, who would like to actually have leverage inside of an ETF. So rather than, you know, if I want to buy, say, the FTSE 100, I'd like to have two times the upside, understanding that I'm going to also have two times the downside. So it's these nuances that investors could somehow do themselves, but perhaps we can do it more efficiently within an ETF wrapper. So we've learned about how ETFs work, examined the range of underlyings, and considered some of the benefits. It's time for the Stock Talk Insight. The beauty of ETFs is that they can be used to build a balanced portfolio. They enable investors to allocate assets and gain exposure to asset classes, indices, geographical areas, commodities, using ETCs as well as traditional ETFs and fundamental styles. 
Any long-term investor with an idea of the portfolio balance they want to achieve can use ETFs to excellent effect. And since ETFs dispense with fund managers and research teams, their costs are lower, meaning that more of your savings stay in the fund. This type of portfolio lends itself to tax-efficient accounts such as ISAs and self-invested personal pensions. Some investors find market timing troublesome, or indeed the nature of their available funds means little and often rather than lump sums. Drip feeding cash into the market can make sense. It allows you to take advantage of pound cost averaging. That is, by investing a similar amount each month, you will inevitably buy at market peaks. But you will also buy when the market dips, and at these low points you will purchase disproportionately more units. ETFs lend themselves to regular investment. They are diversified and collectively offer access to world markets and sectors. Over the long term, you will be able to build up profitable positions, creating a diversified portfolio. A different kind of investor might monitor world markets and sectors, seeking opportunities to take advantage of volatility in stocks, sectors, bonds or commodities. ETFs present possibly the most accessible and cost-effective method of gaining diversified exposure. And, because designated market makers offer real-time two-way prices, spreads the tie in liquidity maintained, so selling should be just as easy. Well, that's it from this edition of Stock Talk. I hope you found it useful. If you'd like more information about exchange traded funds, call our customer services helpline. We'll be happy to help. And if there's any topics you'd like covered by the program, email me at the address on the screen. Thank you for watching.